Welcome back to Refresto's for what is, I'm pretty sure, episode 24 now on the M113 build. I'm dragging this out, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> we still got no engine in it again. Right, so what we're going to do in this episode now, I'm hoping this episode is going to be the... It's got to be. Yes, it's got to be the finishing of the engine bay. Because um, obviously I want to crack on and start getting this thing reassembled and we've still got the engine work to do, all the wiring alterations to do now. Um, so got a fair bit to do. So let's go for a minute what we need to do. And um, I guess we should do it really because standing here talking about it isn't going to get much done, is it? And it's cold, so I need to move. Right, so we've got all rough felling done. Uh, we've had two layers of epoxy primer now. Um, what do we need to do? So obviously there is various imperfections in the filler. So now I need to do fine filler and try and tidy up all them points. Um, I've got to sand down the wing rails just to better do something for now. Not too worried about that. What else we gonna do? Again, the sand. Every time I paint it, I can spend four hours blasting it out with the, you know, airline or that stuff. But still when I paint it, I somehow knock sand out somewhere I didn't think existed. <laughs> and I still get sand back in the primer again. Um, so that's something I have to be really careful with because when it comes to paint, that's gonna be an issue. Um, so we'll try and avoid that. So what have we got? Ah, I had a parcel arrive. Now, another one from Buzzworld. So we're we'll trying more of their products again. I'll say try and buy them, but try them for myself. Um, Gravitex, that's gonna be coating where the old insulation used to be. And I'm hoping I've got enough to do chassis rolls now as well, because that'd be nice, but we'll see. I should do, I think one litre should be plenty for that. Uh, we've got two and a half litres of what's Lano paint. So I think Buzzworld are the first people to actually make what they call Lano paint. Um, but it is basically a, a lanolin based uh, rust prevention product with a tinter, essentially, I think. So that'll be doing the arches. Um, once I've finished cleaning them back, a bit more to do yet. Um, but that will come after all the paint stages. Idea, what else we got to do here then? Oh, we've got. I thought I'd buy the Passive 8, just an uh, anti corrosive, uh, another well crew primer. Try that one. And what I really wanted last week was 1k epoxy primer um, just because it's all good having it in the gun but if I only do a quick repair or say I've done a bit of work on there I just want to touch up a few areas I don't always want to mix in 2k paint just to protect it and it's a lot of faff when you could just spray some of that over there and come back to it at a later date and then as you do when you order from Buzzworld you always order lucky dip cans uh, in this event I got another epoxy primer so not the end of the world and then I got sent um, uh, chassis guard which is the lanolin product in a can not really needed to be honest because I've already previously bought two and a half litres of a chassis guard plus been given lano care by lano care and I've ordered two and a half litres of lano paint but oh well that would be handy for touch ups I guess it's even easier so yeah um, one thing to note see you can speak to Craig at Buzzworld and he'll advise you on what you need um, it is coming up to Christmas now it is almost Christmas so yeah, I think they're quite busy because delivery on this took a week to get sent out. Plus then DHL decided to attempt to deliver it like five, ten miles away both times for two days in a row for some reason. So yeah, it did take a few days to come. So be just be careful if you want something like next day. Well, not next day, but soon. Um, you'll have to wait a bit. So I'm excited to try these out. Uh, as I was saying, the Gravitex, I plan to do all around in here. Um, one, because it's a lazy, easy option. Two, because it will actually hopefully be effective. Um, and three, because it's the lazy, easy option. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll kill quite a few birds with one stone, which would be quite handy, to be honest. So, I'm gonna crack on now. I'm gonna fine fill all these issues um, to an extent, we're not going crazy. Again, this is never new perfect. But like here you can see obviously there's, there's pitted metal and I'm not going crazy on this. Here you've got some spot welds. It's never going to be worth. It's not. No, no. I'm not. We can't go pristine. That's just. This does silly. That's a ton of time, a ton of work, when the car itself is not good at the minute. So, I'm going to shut up, and we're going to make some progress. Let's get this thing in paint.
There we go. That's the fine filler, mostly applied, down to a reasonable standard. There's a few still small little bits, but that can happen after the next stage. Well, no, after the next two stages. So that's done. I've now cleaned up and degreased anywhere I've been working. So there's one thing I want to try. I, I could just 2K high build right now, but I want to see what this epoxy is like. So this Buzzword 1K epoxy is actually a really good price. I think it's like seven quid a can, which is actually really good. Um, spec wise is pretty good. So I've warmed it up a tiny bit because it was freezing cold. Typical Buzzword comes with a decent nozzle and a standard kind of nozzle. So shaking it up. I have no idea how it's going to go down, but what I'm going to do is try one test area first and make sure it doesn't bite back in because obviously we've got a 2k epoxy, 2k filler, and then a 1k filler. Oh, it's a funny, funny colour that is. Do a little half coat on that. But obviously being, so this is solvent based, the green filler is solvent based, whereas the others have solvents, but they hardened by chemical so there's a chance that this could react into the green filler if it's not hard enough that is a funky old color hence why i've also warmed it up a bit because i don't want it sitting on there freezing cold and not curing for ages because that gives it more chance to bite back into existing layers just try okay so it's interesting coverage uh, I haven't, by the way, gone to town at the front here because it's mostly hidden. So I've now decided anywhere it is sort of completely hidden uh, not to go crazy on it because it's a complete waste of time and we're running out of time. So I'm now going to, if this works out fine, just epoxy. Well, to be fair, I don't actually have to, I could just high build prime it in a second. We'll see. I want to give this stuff a go because I've got two cans of it and I want to know how it works. So I'm going to crack on that in a minute and then you guys will see me shortly. Uh, once we've got the high build primer slightly warmed up again, same sort of thing. I want to layer this on thick. So I'm just trying to get it up to about 20 degrees as opposed to being freezing cold. Let's pop some high build on, see what happens. There we have it. That's two decent thick layers of um, 2K high build on. So now we've got that nice orange build finish, which will sand off beautifully because high build primer sands fantastic. We just gotta be careful because obviously we know, although the panels are now like mostly smooth, they ain't flat. So whatever I'm sanding, you need to be careful that I'm not sanding too keen because you'll soon rub through to the like there, it's a high spot I can see. If I'm not careful, I'll rub through to a high spot. So yeah, bit of careful sanding, ideally tomorrow morning. Then we can get the seam sealer on, the Gravitex on, depending on drying time, so both of them is my concern. And if they can get dried in time, get it painted tomorrow night. That would be my ideal plan. And that way, tomorrow night being Christmas Eve, no, no, tomorrow night, no. Oh, yeah. No, I've got an extra day, haven't I? Oh, ideal. Yes, no. Today is, today's Friday. So tomorrow, so actually if need be, I could paint it Christmas Eve, which isn't the problem, and it can drive a Christmas, and then I can come back to it and get cracking with, oh, what an idiot. I forgot to do it. We still need to drill the hole over there for the uh, washer pipe, which we best do before we paint it. And we need to drill the hole in the headlight bucket and in the car for the wiring looms to come through. Okay. But these repairs now, they're not perfect, but you can hardly tell that there were two holes there, a hole there, and where the battery tray had been cut out. So that's good. All right, I'll see you tomorrow for more fun. So, paint is dry. Well, primer is dry. It actually went on surprisingly smooth, really smooth. Um, so that's good news. 
I'm happy with that. So, yep, nothing's perfect, but we're not going for perfection. So what's the next steps now? Well, so we've still got a few little fine frilly bits to do. So I'm gonna jump onto them in a second, and then we need to rub down this high build, smooth it out. Um, but in order to rub down the high build properly, we need to put what's called a guide coat on there, because it's hard to see, well, you can't really see when you rubbed down smooth um, or there's any pits left in it. So the best way of doing that, you can buy a proper guide coat stuff, you got powdery stuff you put on, or some black spray paint. And all you do is you just, you put like a little, little gray mist over it. So when you start sanding, you know you're smooth when you can no longer see any of the um, blacky gray bits. And it's simple as that really. So I'll be doing that in a minute over all the areas requiring sanding. Serio, uh, sanding. And then we can start sanding it down. So to sand down the high build, uh, we don't want to be using as harsh a grit as we're doing for filler because we're going to make a complete mess of it. Um, we need to be finishing off with no scratches deeper than a 400 grit for our paint, ideally. Um, so if the primer's rough, I might knock it back first with 240, most of the way, and then finish it off with 400-ish. Um, uh, or if it's quite smooth, I might better just 400 it down straight away um, with a mix of the hand block and the DA. Um, so let's crack on on these last few boring bits, get that prepped, and then we can start working on the fun of seam sealing and the Gravitex. Now I've never used a seam sealer for this like purpose before, I've used it under cars in areas where I've done welding before, but never actually like seam sealed factory joints again. So that's going to be a learning curve for me. Well, I didn't bother to record all that because I'm sure you guys have seen me sand just a couple times now. So what we've now got is, well, I told you I'd rub through it, didn't I? But we've got a nice super smooth. So that's now been rubbed down to about 400 um, with, I completely forgot I had these. The sanding, the Norton sanding sponges. I love them, they're, they make life so much easier when you're doing like, all these curves and that stuff, it's, they're great. That and the DA and whatnot and the block. So, that's now rubbed down. What's next? Well, next I've actually got to go on a cool out. It'll work, great. But prior to that, I want something to be set in. Seam sealer. So, I don't know if these seams here were factory seam sealed or what, um, but I'm gonna seal them up because there's no point in being open. Uh, same with the Basically everywhere the panels meet that isn't like a designed as like a drain point or like a you know purposeful point, I might as well just seam seal up. And obviously everywhere I've removed seam sealer. So the sound blast obviously removed a lot of the seam sealer everywhere. So I need to re-seam seam seal all these joints. Um I'm not sure where they're meant to be sealed, but I might as well seal them. See where water doesn't need to get in, you might as well not let it get in. Because it's only gonna do harm if it is in there. So yeah. I'm going to start seam sealing up all this. We'll see any welds that are going to stay as um, exposed, seam sealed up. Yeah. Now, I've never used Tiger Seal before. I know it's good shit. Um, and I've never actually seam sealed panels for like, um, and then painted over it makes sense. Like, you know, I've seam sealed everywhere, it's not visible, but I guess using my finger, potentially the spreader if needed. And I did get somewhere a paintbrush, but I've lost, oh, there he is. A disposable paintbrush. Let's see if I can mess this right up. Because obviously what you can see, unless it's being covered by stone trip, it's all going to be visible. What's the worst that could happen, eh? So that's seam sealer applied. Um, didn't quite work out how I wanted to, to be honest. So I used tiger seal. Probably not the best idea. Well, in terms of actually being functional, sealing off the panel and being long lasting and durable is obviously incredible. Perfect. Problem being is, I don't know why I, for some reason, I just, yeah, it seemed to be sold in the same sort of market as the standard seam sealers, which are obviously a brushable and fine. So Tiger Seal is not. It just, it didn't occur to me about the grab adhesive side of things and Tiger Seal has a lot of grab. So it meant applying it. Every time I obviously used a gun, it stringed off a gun it would stick to your finger because it's unbelievably sticky and it, you can't you can't smooth it out now looking back i could I probably smoothed it out maybe with some thinners um but then it's becoming a bit of a faff 
Either way, it's on. It'll do. Um, yeah. But I've, I've kind of learned from that, and there's probably better ways of doing it. Definitely better ways of doing it. So, what next? Well, I think stone chip now, isn't it, really? Now, the seam seal is set because I'd have gone to cool out. I need to get stone chip on, and that has to sit at four to six hours at 20 degrees before being able to paint it. Well, it can sit at night at like 10 degrees if it wants to. <laughs> so, I'm going to stone chip it now, leave it overnight, and that should be it, really. That's the plan. Um, and then tomorrow uh, afternoon, it'll be actually tomorrow afternoon, we can get in. We can finish keying it up, give it another wipe down, and paint. Exciting. That's Christmas Eve, paint a Capri. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to now get on and mask up, which is obviously the part we need to grab Tex. It's that back part. I want to do the, the rest of the uh, bulkhead anyway. So we'll do all that, bar the heater bubble. And ideally, down the chassis rails as well, and this front panel. So that's the plan. Also because the Gravitex will actually make the um, seam seal look nicer because obviously it doesn't look nice because I couldn't smooth it out. Not about trying thinners and whatnot. So yeah, let's see what we can do now. All right, Gravitex slightly warmed up, shaken up. Done a rough mask off. I'm hoping it's enough to not get any overspray. We'll see. But I guess go for it. So I've learned another lesson. Despite the stone chip gun being on very low pressure, it still gets everywhere. So guess what Mark just spent, I don't know how long, wiping down everything that wasn't Gravitex with thinners to remove the Gravitex everywhere. Ah, oh, there's little specks of it just, 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 yeah. Either way, that's done now. Uh, the car's been keyed up. Gravitex is obviously done. So what we need to do now is just mask up properly-ish. Um, I'm still only doing it roughly along the edge of his wings here, then I'll end up having to, because I need to... They're going to have to be wet, thinned off, wet sanded and all sorts anyway, so... I'm not too concerned about that yet. I just need to make sure we get somewhat a edge-ish on top of this. Um, maybe. We'll see. I'm not being fussy. The wing rails around the outside is... I do not care about one bit, because that's not what I'm doing at the minute. Uh, I might as well do the whole car. So what do we need? Other than a dog to find its ball by the sounds of it. Need to mask up, get the epoxy on to seal all the other the rub throughs, repairs, and to go over the stone chip. And then we're on to paint. Ooh, finally. Oh, and one annoying issue I've got to sort. It's so windy and wet outside, great. It's actually sort of making its way in now through the vents. It's going up underneath the cow outside and making its way back down through the vents. Which means I'm having water drip onto the paint. So I'm going to have to now put, which wouldn't be an issue if it's in the spray booth. That doesn't happen in there. So now I'm going to have to rig up some kind of tarp or something to stop water ruining the new paint job. So I'm going to crack on that a minute. Almost missed a complete step. So we've got these grommets to go in in the back of the headlight bowl and from inside the car in for the wiring loom to go through the wing so i need to drill the holes for them now and the hole in the back corner for the washer pipe to come out um yeah there's many different ways i can do that but i might just drill a hole in the back corner keep it simple so i'll crack on that now Typical. Put down the epoxy just to seal it off again one last time. And what do we get? Something I haven't had in years. The 
few little reactions. They're only minor, but obviously I need to sort them out. Um, so all I can do now is wait for this to dry, hopefully within like the hour, sand it back, degrease it again, and recover these areas, and hope that the epoxy doesn't react carefully. Odd, very odd. So I haven't had any reactions in years. But whilst waiting for this to dry, what we can do in a minute is get the paint ready to go. So, over here I've been slightly warming up, um, just because it's going to be, I'm going to have to keep it warm, it's too cold. We've got a yellow paint, which is the wrong shade of yellow, it should, yeah, not going to say too much, but every time I order paint from this specific company, they seem to send me a colour which doesn't match with the REL code I ordered, and uh, I don't want to paint to be honest. Now I used this on the Brembo calipers, if you saw the video. And it was almost impossible to use. Now I know yellow is meant to be a terrible colour to paint, as I found out. Um, pigment in it is so weak, it's really difficult to cover. But I think this, this paint is exceptionally poor. But then again, it is, you know, it's budget paint, so you get what you pay for, don't you, really? So, we've got some yellow, got some red to mix in to hopefully make it the shade we want it ish. So, I guess I best just start mixing together and um, try and make it work, really. So I'm going to pour some of this yellow out into another tin, save it for later, and we'll start pouring the red in until we get a shade I'm happy with. So mistakes may have been made. So that's the pot of paint we're using. A lot less than I started with. Um, I may have put a splash of red into a yellow before, forgetting just how weak the pigment is in the yellow and how strong it is in the red, which meant that tiny splash. I think I put in about a hundred mil, if that, into four in about four point three liters of yellow, and it instantly made that. <laughs> so, oh no, which is just only slightly too orangey, but luckily I saved some yellow to a side, so I've now mixed up that paint for the engine bay, and I poured a whole load more red in there, so now I need to paint a car orange one day. I've got an awful lot of paint on the shelf, Be between all the previous different mixes, different colours that I've got. I've got two or three different greys, I've got the, the golf colour mixed up, I've got blacks. They accidentally sent me a whole pot of basically turquoise, well in there's like a lime greeny sort of turquoisey colour as well. So one day I can paint a lot of cars in a lot of random weird colours. <laughs> but that's not any use to me today. So now I've now answered my question when I come to paint the rest of the Capri. I won't be using this rubbish paint again. I'll probably get something decent because I've now not got any more of the rubbish paint to paint it in. <laughs> what an idiot. Oh well, these things happen. Let's crack on. It's now unboxing day. <laughs> I wanted this thing painted, actually. I wanted it painted weeks ago and then a few days ago. But we're still on it. Typical. So, see, I think I said uh, Christmas Eve about them reactions. They're now rubbed out. Problem is, because obviously so many areas are sort of not flat because it's just not practical, rubbing them issues out then meant I had to rub through the high spots again. And it ideally now actually it's at the stage where I should go back to high build primer on these areas, flat that down. But I'm not gonna because I'm now at that stage where I'm going, it is what it is. So <laughs> it's now rubbed down the reacted areas, it's, it was an interesting one, um, it instantly reacted as soon as the paint sort of went on the surface, so that's a surface contamination, it didn't bite back into anything below it, which is good, because actually it's easy, that's easier to fix, um, but it's still a pain, because it meant I had to you know, dry it out, rub it all down again, for all them, all them areas that happened, so not good fun, but either way, we're through it now. So. I've just mixed up some more primer, I now need to reprime all these areas that had the reactions. One, just to make sure that it doesn't happen again, 
Um, and two, obviously, I need to unseal off any filler or uh, bare metal that's now exposed again for the fourth time. <laughs> so we'll do that in a minute. Providing that goes well, we'll be on to painting soon. Well, this thing does not want to play ball whatsoever today. <sighs> but to be fair, that's now most issues sorted out. We'll see how that area down there goes. I'm not sure yet, but I'm fed up now. So we're just going to crack on. So in order to make this slightly less stressful, because I previously mentioned about the pigment being so weak in this paint, partly because it's yellow, that's what I mixed up. Um, slightly warmed it up a bit. What I'm going to do is because there's so many little nicks and crannies to get into, and that's really difficult with a um, gravity fed gun. Because obviously you can't get the gun close in there, let alone aim it in there properly and whatnot. It hits the things you don't want to hit. So the idea is, I'm going to go around and I'm going to paint all the difficult areas first. Or at least mostly paint them, so that's going to be like inside this violence, in there, uh, in the ARB mounts, in the hinge areas, and try and get all that stuff done first. Because what I don't want to be doing is coming back over paint I painted on top of these wings and in the inner wings trying to get into them areas because I'm going to catch the paint. Um, so if I paint the areas first at the panes and the areas don't matter, once they're done I can then come out and I can start painting the actual, all the stuff that matters. Because the pigments are crap, it might take six coats to do it. So obviously <laughs> compared to a typical spray job where you do maybe two and a half coats, if I've got to do six, seven coats, that's twice as much risk of dust, dirt, twice as much risk of catching the paint, twice as much risk of runs, all that kind of such. So it's going to be an absolute nightmare. Uh, well, I hope it's not, but I'm just preparing for it to be a nightmare. So that's why I'm going to do these bits first. That way, when it comes to actually doing the parts that matter, I can concentrate and just chill out and do them parts. So yeah, I'm going to try them now. So that's all the fifthly bits, down with four coats now, and the coverage still isn't there, as to be expected. But I don't want to completely finish them areas, because we'll still be going back over them when we do the final few coats. So, I should now be ready to start doing all the areas I haven't done, the easy areas. Once they've got about four coats down as well, um, I hope it doesn't take that much, but probably will do, um, then we can smash over and, ah, oh, my days. Oh my, maybe not. This is the issue with not having my paint booth. And the weather outside has just gone absolutely mental. Well, shit. Well, it seems as car as I've already is because it just wants to constantly screw me. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh, I've painted quite a few cars now. I've done all sorts and yeah, nope. So it started off the first pretty well. It's going all right. Ideal. Yep, for the first coat. And then we come around to here. And I literally wipe off now, but instantly, as soon as it hit around here, nope, contamination. So you can see I took the blue roll and just gone, gone to town and just wiped most off because we don't wipe it off. I'm only going to wait for it to dry and then sand it off. So might as well get most of it done. So, yep, contaminants are around here, around there, uh, back there, down there. Um, I think none that side now. Uh, none down there. Yeah. But you can see the pigment in this paint is so weak, so weak, it's horrific, but oh well. So, <laughs> that's where I'm at, So and over there, look at that. Bearing in mind, this, especially this area here, had been keyed up, panel wiped, and I don't know how many times, because I've, you guys didn't see it, but I've already, when I've done the outside bits, I've already had that issue, and it caused me a little nightmare. So, once again, I went around the whole bay and I went crazy. It's had two or three more panel wipes with new cloths every time. Gone proper to town on it, and yet still. So, it can only be, because it's on top of the primer, it can only be from when I removed the overspray from the Gravitex. 
So either something on the cloth to do with that, something in the thinners or something had basically sat and got into the primer and it's caused me nothing but crap since. <laughs> oh, I've had... Oh, okay. So either way, these things happen. All I can do now really is it's got to dry enough for me to sand it because I need to sand it down smooth, sand it back into the primer uh, and then I'll do what I've done previously now. I'll re-epoxy over with a one care epoxy just because it's much quicker and provided it doesn't react, get a good coat down and then we know we're good. We're fine from then on. Um, and keep doing that until I have no kind of reactions. Let's try again. <laughs> so everywhere that I'd had issues, I rubbed back. Um, in the end, I ended up putting heat gun on it and just going for it rather than waiting a day. Um, so that's there, there, um, yeah, around there, across here, and across here. They've all been rubbed back down where possible and then gently 1K epoxy primed back until we've got no issues. And currently, we appear to have no issues. So please, please, please stay that way. <laughs> um, if not, I'm burning it. <laughs> we'll go for that, right? Surely that's an option. Um, yeah, so might as well try again now. Um, I can see there, is that a little run I've got? Not really, I can feel, but because the pigment's so weak, the pigment moves within the paint. So it's almost like you're applying a clear coat with a bit of paint inside of it. Um, the, the inside pigment doesn't only builds up where the where the clear coat or well, paint builds up. It's a proper pig. It's horrible to work with. Horrible. Um, and I keep using the same paint again, the same manufacturer. Every time I do it again, every time I hate the paint. Um, so I, I was going to stop using it now. But I've actually got a lot of it sitting on the shelf because they kept sending me the wrong ones in all sorts. So I've got a lot of paint there. <laughs> oh well. Let's crack on now. Let's try and paint it again. Right, pups? Should we paint it again? Yeah. Do paints again? Yes, you want to paint it again, don't you? Um, we'll try paint it again and see what happens. So the idea now is if I can get another two coats on it, I'm not able to smash it on like I normally would. Um, partly because the paint's crap. Uh, secondly, just because I'm slightly out of practice by a good few years. <laughs> and um, thirdly, the, the temperature is completely wrong. Um, it's way too cold. So I'm not able to get a super nice finish. Um, I'll aim for trying to get the best finish possible on top of the wings in the visible places and then what we might end up having to do is leave one final coat, not done, wait for it to cure, uh, sand it down, sand out any imperfections and then do the final coat and hope for the best that way. That might be the plan. Um, problem is it requires so many coats because of the coverage issue. Um, it's like I said previously, there's so many risks not being in a spray booth, not being in a warm environment and being an amateur um, and every single coat you know, doubles your risk of having issues and when you start getting to needing like six coats that's a lot of risk <laughs> but either way, I'm beyond caring now let's just keep going and let's see if we can get this thing to be a shade of yellow ideally all the same shade of yellow and even better the shade of yellow I want that would really be helpful Well, that's our actual first coat of paint down without any reactions. However, I may have got a bit excited. It was going down really nice, really nice. So I got a bit excited and I pushed my gun a bit far. So we've got some dust in it, but beautiful gloss level. And obviously the gun smashed it out beautifully because it's a really nice gun and set up for it. But, <laughs> I may have just slightly forgot the conditions are very cold and that the car is very cold. The paint might have been a bit warm, but the car isn't. So, yeah. There's a couple of little runs. They're not actually huge, but the thing is, they look a lot worse because the pigment in the runs obviously is much deeper than the pigment on the panel. <laughs> so then they stick out like a sore thumb now. 
uh, they'll flat out easy, but I'm going to take it more gentle, aren't I? And the other issue being is it takes 300ml of paint to do one coat. So this still probably needs another two good coats at least to get the paint. Because you see the run there, maybe, maybe not. That's the colour I want it. <laughs> so it's going to take two or three coats at least to get up to that colour. Um, I don't have much paint. Oh dear. So I've got to make up some plans. But I think what we'll have to do is just use up all this paint paint everything we can do, flat out the runs, and then get another patch of paint, another patch, another batch of paint, whereas I might actually go base coat, clear coat this time, and then put that on top. Obviously the yellow underneath will help a lot, because that will help any kind of, the next paint that goes down will need one to two coats, it, that's it, because coverage would be perfect, because I've already covered it in yellow. So now I'm going to let this flash off, um, I'll smash another coat on there. Or maybe not smash it, it's heavy this time. <laughs> well, I love smashing it heavy because it, it, it lays out and it you know, turns into glass, which is exactly what I want until it runs off again and I'm in trouble. Now we have it. So I'm not sure you can actually see on the camera well. But out the gun, finish, and some of it, incredible. Really good. So uh, yeah, I haven't lost all my skills. <laughs> um, but I did make a good few mistakes. Um, so there is some runs to rub out. I guess, with the pigment being so weak, I'm better looking at it going, oh yeah, it's not really making a difference. Put too much paint on, runs off. And as soon as you start getting a run in this, you can tell because the pigment just goes with the run. <laughs> so bit stupid um, but you can see here like on these edges they're still quite dark and all these edges that's not the light that is the actual paint probably another two coats at least to get good enough coverage which is a pain so if I didn't mess up mixing the paint in the first place I would have paint but I am I'm not very happy with the paint full stop so I think what we'll do is we'll use this now to go and try the base cut option I reckon a yellow base coat would cover better, but we'll find out. And what we've got now is we, we have got a solid yellow base now to paint on top of, so the work required now isn't much. Um, it's a shame, because in a lot of places, it's got a really outstanding finish. <laughs> um, considering the temperatures and all that, you know, the camera doesn't do it quite justice. It is darker on camera, though in person it is on camera, camera makes it a bit too light. Um, so yeah, it would have been actually a nice colour in the end. Oh well, these things happen. So, a bit of a shame, if I had enough paint to another few coats, we would have been there. But I think it's probably a good time then, to put it down to experience. Um, painting's hard, it's really hard. Um, for those of you who have done it, you know actually it's... Providing you've got the right tools, the right environment, using good products, and you know the products well, and a bit of practice, fine. I'm, I've got some experience now. Um, I keep changing the products I use and learning new ones, so I'm still learning a lot of them. Um, and at the minute, my environment really isn't very good. It's the completely wrong time of year, it's cold, and I'm not even in the booth from the workshop. So, yeah, quite a few things against me. Plus, I've made a good few mistakes. I've had about, well, whenever I've been up in the workshop now the last four days, this thing has given me nothing but crap. Every time I've tried to do something, it's bit me back in the face. And we, we kept going, and we got this far, but it wasn't meant to be. So I'm going to have to wait for this to cure now. Uh, Dean a bit, uh, maybe knock out any little bits of orange peel that are there, uh, knock out the runs, whoops. Um, we could just send it as it is and use it for now, but it's not good enough. Um, I know I haven't prepped the bay to be perfect. I don't want it to be perfect because in the end I got I gave up on it being perfect. Um, especially when the rest of the car around it needs a full restoration. <laughs> so on that note, I'm probably gonna go and order a few liters of base coat. Um, 
Try another Ariel code. Hope maybe by getting it from a different manufacturer, but I actually received a color I order, unlike all the 2K paint I've ordered from the same company in the last year odd, last two years. have been like the wrong color every time, pretty much. So maybe try order from someone else. Choose a yellow base coat, ideally a factory color or an Ariel color, which I can keep without mixing myself. That way in the future, if I do keep the engine bay paint and I paint the rest of the car, it'll be pretty much correct. I was going to go buy an expensive clear cut kit. I really like the liquid glass. I use that on the Mark II Golf, which is the first ever car I resprayed fully. Um, really like it. It's, well, in comparison, it's close to three times the price of a cheap kit like the Upol one. Um, but I might for now just go and buy the cheaper kit because it'll be, it's, it's absolutely fine. It's completely suitable. And I've still got other components I'll need clear coat for to paint. And I won't be painting them with expensive clear coat because that'd be a waste. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to go buy that, but that's not going to arrive until the new year, um, and then I'll be back at work. But, for those of you who have been following the series, in, well, by the time this video comes out, in around about a month's time, I'm suddenly going to find myself with a lot of time. So although you might not see, like, tons of videos coming out, I'm going to be making a lot of videos. Um, the product project back there, after sitting there for a year now, whoops, is going to be in full swing. Um, this thing here needs to get done, and essentially, I'm going to be on these doing these until we're done. Um, yeah, so there'll be no work for me. The plan is to be, yeah, just get get to focus on these two, get these done. So that's what I want to do, really. Um, so it's annoying, we're not going to be reassembling this side of the new year now, but I can now move my attention on next episode to the engine. Um, probably actually move my attention first to the cross member and all the other parts that are required to bolt us back in, we can get on and paint them, get them all sorted, get all the brackets done and start getting it as ready as to go as possible, um, weld up the engine. I reckon we've only got about, yeah, one more episode of prep work on the suspension, the engine, uh, some of the other components, that are, you know, the bolt ons and such before they're all ready to be used. We need to do brake lines, but obviously we now can't do brake lines, so that's now delayed until it's painted, which is a real big pain. Um, I could go around and sort out some of the other rust on the car whilst I'm waiting. Um, fabricate bits for the gearbox tunnel where it needs to be done still. There's a fair bit we can do still. But we do need to get painted ASAP before we can reassemble. So I better order some parts, bed now. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. I don't know how long this video is. Sorry if it's long. Sorry if it's short. I don't know. It is what it is. I hope you've enjoyed watching me fail again. Um, that's the one thing on my channel. I try not to hide anything. What you see is what you get. I'm not perfect. I'm not a mechanic. I'm not a painter. I'm an electrician. I, I wire in fault finding such for a living. I don't, I don't do this. Oh, actually, well, we can also make all the wiring. So we can do all the wiring and start working out the headlights and that as well before, um, before I actually need to paint anything again. That's good. I can do that part. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I'll make mistakes and that's the whole part of the game. It's The idea is it's DIY. Um, I'm learning as I go along. I'm taking you guys for the ride. You can watch me fail. You might learn something. Ideally, you will learn from my mistakes like I should be doing really. <laughs> and um, yeah, so obviously if you're new to this series and this is the first episode you watched, there's a previous 24 episodes, I think, prior to this um, on the whole build. This is the first ever running and driving M113 powered Ford Capri that I can find on the internet at all. Um, and it seems likely that is the case. I know of one other person that contemplated doing it, one other person, person who started doing it, but no, nope, I think there is no one else so far that has managed to actually do it. Or if they have, they haven't posted anything online about it whatsoever, which would be a bit strange in the day and age, considering products like that tend to end up online. And obviously it's only within the last few years that the M113 engine has probably become affordable to use as in stupid projects like this. So yeah, I'm still banking it on the first ever running driving M113 powered Ford Capri. So there's tons more on that build. There's obviously things like the L322 Range Rovers, uh, loads on them, Range Rover Classics, my Mark II Golf 25 turbo builds, um, and just all sorts really. So there's tons on the channel. Why not stick around? 
If you're not subscribed currently, please subscribe. Please like the video, because that really does help with the whole YouTube algorithm and helps the channel grow. And um, yeah, with any luck, I'll see you guys again next time. I've been Jordan. Cheers.